So, hello everybody, and uh, I would like to uh, invite our friend uh, Edward, uh, Edward Iben from uh, Royal, Royal Holloway in London. Uh, he would like to speak about uh, minimizing reachability times uh, in temporal graphs uh, when you um, update the labels, we shift some, some labels. Um, Edward, the stage is yours. So yeah, thank you very much for uh... Uh, introduction and also thank you very much for, for inviting me and for giving me the opportunity to give the, the first talk, even though I have uh, just uh, one, one result on temporal graphs that's not yet published, but that was that also make it much easier to choose what I will speak about. So, uh, yeah. And since this is the first talk on temporal graphs and uh, there might be somebody in audience that, that uh, don't know much yet about temporal graphs, I will start with very short. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So I will start with very short introduction about temporal graphs. Let's move. Uh, can I move this thing somewhere? Yeah. Very short in introduction. So temporal graphs is just this uh, generalization on on graphs with kind of a to kind of a more dynamic settings. And there are maybe several different models, but let me just introduce uh, one. So we will have uh, vertices, right? So like in, in normal graph, we have vertices, but now instead of just one set of edges, uh, we have some, some lifetime on the, which is like a lifetime is just some natural number telling us how many kind of uh, uh, steps Time, discrete time steps there are in our graph. And then for each uh, time step, we have a different uh, set of edges, or uh, it could be same, could be different, but some set of edges. So for example, one setting could be like in the first time we have edges, uh, edges like this. Then in the second step, the connection changes completely to something like this and so on and so on, and uh, maybe uh, we have uh, six different time steps that uh, look like this, especially for, for, for the slides and also for sometimes thinking about these problems, at least for me, it's also quite easier to, to have this, all this information actually one static graph, and uh, we'll be seeing on my slides later also uh, this kind of representation of the temporal graph, where we just have uh, one static graph, which is basically underlying graph, it's union of all the edge sets. And now on each edge, there, is, there are some labels and the label says at which time step the, the edge was active, right? So for example, we have some, uh, some edges that were active in the, in the first step are, are marked with one. Uh, this, uh, this only edge that was uh, active in the last, in the step six is marked with a label six. Uh, and that edge was also active in the time one. So it's also marked with, with label one uh, and so on, right? Okay, since uh, we are speaking about reachability in these temporal graphs, we need to kind of define one with, uh, what is a path, right? Because to define reachability, we need to, to know how we can connect. And again, we can have uh, different uh, definitions of what a path in a temporal graph could be, uh, but we will now focus only on uh, a single definition where we actually, as uh, it says, we want a path that is a path in the underlying graph, but it also have increasing uh, labels, meaning that, uh, we can imagine that uh, we are starting at some, at some point. So maybe the connections are like, a, a say, at that time, you can take a, a bus from one stop to the other stop, or maybe bus is not exactly the, the best uh, imagination for the uh, undirected graph. Maybe instead of an undirected graph, you can imagine that it's like a, a train, train crossing, that it's uh, open. At the time, at that time step that we have, we have a label, right? So, uh, and we can all, all, in one time step we can only move uh, along one edge, right? 
So for example, when we, when we start in a, in a vertex S, uh, we can either in the first step take, take the, 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 the topmost edge going up, or uh, we can also wait. In every time step, when we are in a, in, in a, in a vertex, we can wait for, for a better connection, right? So in, in this simple example, and going from S to T, it's actually the best for us to, to take the, the one edge going up, but there could be examples where it's actually better to wait at some, at some place for a better connection, right? So uh, you can imagine uh, the very slow train arrives at, at some point to the, to the train station, and there is, uh, there is a very fast ICE uh, a train going in half an hour. And if the first connection is 10 hours and the second connection is just three hours, you still wait one hour for the, for the, for the, for the faster connection, right? And the same thing can happen in temporal graphs that uh, you can find at, at some cases, a path that is uh, faster than going immediately, taking some edge immediately rather wait in the vertex until some better connection is active, right? But in this case, if we, for example, waited until step two, we would just have to take the bottom edge and we can kind of see that uh, that wouldn't lead us to, to T at all because uh, after taking the connection, after taking this bottom connection here at time, at time two, we can only take the connection uh, at time five because the, since we took the connection at time two, we cannot take another connection at time, at time two from the vertex that we, that we reached, right? So after looking a little bit longer at this example, we can see that the only possible uh, temporal, or not the only, there are actually two uh, temporal paths, but they look exactly like this and they both arrive at time, at time six. So the first temporal path is take the top edge at time one, then takes the only edge uh, that we can go at time two, and then wait until time six to take the, the last connection. And the second temporal path is take the edge at time one, wait until time four, take the only edge at time four, and then take the only edge at time six. But, uh, now comes into play this kind of a shifting labels that we have. So what if I now tell you, okay, we have this, this graph, but uh, what if I have a power to change some connections? So what if I have a power to change one connection to something else? Uh, can, I, can I get to my, to my destination faster, right? And one example would be delaying this, uh, this, this edge, uh, that's marked there that's crossed from two to three, right? And now taking this path, we can wait in S until time two, take the edge at time two. And now we delayed the edge uh, that was at time two there that we couldn't, couldn't catch to time three. And now we can catch it and then take finally the edge at time four to the destination. And similarly, if we, instead of the delaying, if we're allowed to, change some, some edge to uh, sooner, so kind of uh, advance it, then we can even reach uh, T at time two by advancing this, this edge from time four to time one, taking it at time step one, and then taking the next edge at time step two directly to T, All right? So these are these kind of a shifting operations that we, that we are allowed to, to use. Now, uh, we are instead of, of just, just path, we were studying reachability from, from some set of vertices, uh, sources, and uh, reaching time from, to, to all vertices from this source. So, for, so first, the reach of some vertex is just the set of vertices we can reach by some temporal path. So for example, uh, we can reach uh, this vertex here, by taking first edge at time, at time one from V to, to the middle vertex and then the edge at time four uh, left. And we can never reach the top, top vertex. Uh, 
you i think it's you can just believe me but uh, you could see it after a bit staring at the graph now the the reach time of the vertex is the time to reach all vertices so in these examples it will be infinity because we are never reaching that one vertex but for example if we start from 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 that vertex we can actually reach all the vertices at time step six Okay, so now when we introduce this shifting, shifting labels and uh, reachability and reach time, and we saw that we can uh, get a better temp temporal paths or faster temporal paths by some changes to the, uh, to the original labels of, of, the, of the graph or, or moving edges from between different edge sets. We can now define the problems that we that we studied. And first problem is uh, what we call reach fast, and is that we have some temporal graph, some set of vertices that are sources from uh, which will be from which we would want to reach uh, some all the rest all the remaining vertices, and some integer d that is kind of a deadline. And now the question is: Is it possible to delay some edges of the of the temporal graph? such that the final reach time for every vertex in our sources is at most the deadline, right? And uh, you notice that we only say delay here instead of delay or advance. And the reason is that in this setting, we do not have any restriction on uh, how much we can advance on how much we can delay, which means that uh, if we were allowed also to advance, it would be, exactly the same question as delay when every edge has uh, basically only label one or possibly uh, if, if, if edge has three different labels like uh, one, five, seven, and we, were, we can both advance them and uh, delay, then it's the same than asking uh, edge with labels one, two, three, and only delay, right? So that's why this, in this question, we ask only for delay instead of uh, delay in advance. And then we also study two, two variants of this problem. And now in, and in this variant, we also allow advancing. And here we are asking whether it's possible to delay or, or advance at most k edges uh, of G such that reach time is again at most D. So now we restrict how many edges we can advance. And in the final variant, we also, we studied uh, is we actually uh, limit also the total change that we allow, right? So uh, if we change from, uh, from label uh, five to label 10, that counts as a, as a change of five, right? And it kind of uh, makes sense because we are changing some, some structure of some, uh, for some, Un underlying uh, problem for, for which we have motivation. And sometimes it's much easier to, to, to change uh, maybe a bus uh, connection by half an hour instead of, of changing it completely to a uh, very different uh, time or, yeah. And of course the change, uh, we, we take the change as an absolute value, right? So advancing is also a positive change. Uh, right, and uh, for for some of our results, uh, we we studied also parameterized complexity of this problem. Parameterized complexity is just uh, kind of this uh, different framework uh, to more fine grade way of studying complexity of a problem, where we uh, analyze the complexity with respect to input and some additional parameters. The best outcome we can get is basic are basically FPT algorithms, which are in running time some function of k, which is for MP hard problems is always exponential or uh, not polynomial times some polynomial in input size, right? So ideally linear or quadratic, but uh, for FPT it doesn't matter that much. But uh, for actual outcome, it matters whether also the polynomial and function. You always want to get them as low as possible, but FPT just is just some function of k times polynomial. 
Sometimes this is not possible, for which there are some hardness classes and some conjectures uh, similar to P versus NP. We have that FPT is not equal to, to W1, uh, is a very uh, is a widespread conjecture in parameterized complexity and, and, and uh, really believed. And for these problems, we can get XP algorithms where we have N to some uh, function of K running time. And sometimes it, it can be NP complete even for some fixed uh, value of parameter. Okay. And now for our results, we first studied the problem with just uh, the, uh, all the variants of our problem with just one source. We saw that our first problem where we are allowed to change, uh, change our uh, labels however we want with just one source is actually solvable in polynomial time is actually quite, quite simple. It's kind of a modification of a, of a Dijkstra's algorithm. So we start in, in, in our source, we look on all the, all, the, all the edges to the vertices that we still didn't have uh, computed the best outcome. And we see that uh, we can reach the top vertex at time one, and we can reach the bottom vertex at time six by just taking these two edges immediately. Right? And now uh, we choose the, the closest vertex we can reach. So it's the, it's the one. We mark it and repeat the process. But now we see that, that there is an edge uh, of value one between the top and bottom vertex that we now cannot use anymore because we used, we re only reached this vertex at time one. But because we are allowed to delay edges, we can now delay that edge to exactly the next time step after, after we, we reached it. So we can change it to time step two. And now we can reach the bottom vertex at time step two and the right vertex at time step three. And similar, now we can mark the, the bottom vertex. And again, there is this edge at time step two that we can now delay into time step three. Okay. Uh, but maybe slightly surprisingly to us, when we look at these uh, two, uh, modif two uh, uh, variants where we bound the, uh, where we bound how much we can delay, then both of these problems are NP hard and especially they are W2 hard already for parameterized by this, by this value K that, that we want to uh, minimize, right? By the number of edges that we can uh, change or by number of, uh, or by the total delay that we can uh, have. And the reduction is from, from hitting set, relatively simple, but I will not go into, into the reduction because we still have, uh, yeah, uh, we still have some results to go through and we don't have too much time, uh, but it's already, on the graphs where we have uh, lifetime free and where we want the deadline to be either to be, to distinguish between deadline free and infinity. So actually we can either change these this, this edges such that the deadline is free or we cannot change it at all to get to, to reach all the vertices. So it's really also very highly unapproximable, right? Similar, now after this, we started looking at the two sources. And here, this, which was very surprising for us, we found out that uh, the problem for two sources is already MP hard uh, for deadline six, which uh, when we were looking at it, I, I really believe that for two sources and constant deadline, it should be polynomial. But then we figure out that it's that is not. And the reduction is from so-called monotone linear non-equal free set. Monotone just means that all variables are only positive everywhere in every class. Uh, linear means that no two clauses, every two clauses intersects at most one variable. And not equal is that to satisfy the class, you have to have at least one variable uh, assigned positive and at least one variable assigned negative in the class. Right. And uh, basically here, the idea is that we have like uh, for each clause, we have something like this, 
And the only way to get from this source at the top to, to uh, Z, Z, Z1 prime is if there is a path through this gadget going down and only way and the same from going up. Uh, so the, if there is a solution, it looks something like this. But uh, you don't really need to right now understand uh, exactly the reduction. Uh, it's just, it was quite surprising for us that it really was MP hard already for deadline six. But we also got some very simple uh, algorithms. For example, one uh, algorithm that we got is uh, where we have just two sources like this and only disjoint paths between them. And for this, the algorithm was actually relatively simple. The main idea was just to guess how we reach from S1 to S2 and, and what time. So the fastest way to reach from S1 to S2 and the fastest way from reach to S2 to S1. And then having these two times and these two, these two paths, all the remaining paths we can uh, solve independently just from these two informations. <laughs> And that's why it kind of was a polynomial. And uh, now finally, we look also for many sources. Here, we first observed that on trees, even without any, uh, without any restriction or anything else, on, uh, we get polynomial time algorithm. And the main idea is basically when we look at some edge, for example, this top one, this top edge, then everything on the left on the right side of this of this edge we can assume that it crosses this edge to the left side at the same time because everybody instead of crossing an edge can wait for the slowest uh, slowest source uh, to reach that vertex and only then together uh, move through the through the edge because everybody anyhow needs to reach it so uh, and that idea gave us kind of a uh, algorithm. And finally, which is also quite, which was quite interesting uh, algorithm, we got FPT algorithm parameterized by a structure called Trivit and the deadline. For Trivit, you don't really need to know exactly what it is, but it's a very dominant structural parameter. And then it was used for many, many pro problems to get uh, FPT yeah. algorithms. That works. Yeah, I have, uh... can I please remind you that um, uh, we, we have 30 minutes, so maybe you can leave a couple of minutes at the end for questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm, I know. I will go uh, a bit faster over this. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of a most dominant structural parameter, and it measures how kind of a tree like the, the graphs are. So, like trees have three with one, kind of when we have. Uh, cycles that are maybe connected uh, by paths, it's 3 bit 2 and very dense graph of 3 bit K. And basically why you don't necessarily need to know what 3 bit is, is because we don't uh, use exactly the structure. We use kind of a very big hammer uh, that uh, tells us that if we can kind of describe our problem by some fragment of, of some logic called uh, MSO, with some free variables. And if now, if the formula has constant size and uh, the tree width of our input graph is constant, then we can solve uh, our problem. So we can decide whether a uh, graph satisfies the formula in linear time. But note the uh, formula is constant and uh, tree width is constant, which means that this is actually FPT because this uh, this uh, constant, this in O, O of N, the constant in, in between before O depends on the size of formula and on the, on the tree width and, and relatively quite badly. So we use this big hammer and I will just tell you what kind of MSO is. So MSO is uh, kind of like what we can do in MSO. It's kind of some kind of a logic we can, uh, quantify over sets of edges or sets of vertices. Uh, we can say whether two, we have variables for vertices and variables for uh, uh, edges. And we can kind of say there is an edge between two, uh, uh, between two vertices 
We can say whether an edge is, is incident on, on vertex and so on. We can say whether edge is equal to some, to some uh, edge is exactly the edge between two vertices and so on. And uh, I will skip the part where I explain how we actually got the, the MSO for, uh, for this problem. Just, I will tell you just a few first steps where we can just start by removing edges that have labeled more than deadline because we will never use such edges when we are only delaying. And we can uh, split the edges with multiple labels to uh, parallel edges, which is a bit easier for our formula. And then we only, uh, and we have only one label for the, all the sources. And yeah, we, yeah, let me skip, skip through, 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 through this. So I can tell you a little bit about uh, open questions. So we studies, we studied this influence of shifting labels on improving reachability in temporal graphs. We show that it's already hard for some rather restricted settings in some other restricted settings. Uh, and this is especially when we want to minimize also the change uh, that we are allowing. And we gave few uh, algorithms, including one uh, FPT algorithm by tree with and deadline, which was the basically kind of a most te technical one. And uh, there are some possible open questions and extensions. So for example, it, would, it might be interesting to ask what happens if the graph, the graph is directed or mixed? Uh, and what if also edges have traversal times, right? So maybe a different connection take a different, could take different time. And actually several of our algorithms already works in these, in these uh, for these extensions. We can also, instead of uh, max minimizing the maximum time to reach a uh, vertex from a source, we can minimize the average time or the or the sign sum of times for for every every source. We can also maybe we want uh, a vertex to be reached by at least one source, and in that case we, we might want to minimize the the time any source reaches uh, reaches uh, a target. We can maybe want things instead of sources. And finally, we can also ask for different problems. Uh, what happens with different problems when we allow shifting labels? Or in general, what happens with, 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 uh, with problem with on temporal graphs when we allow to change uh, our original uh, graph slightly? Okay, thank you for your attention and do you have questions? Thank you very much, Edward, for the nice talk. So we are very uh, short in time. Maybe there is a time for, uh, for one quick question. Yeah. So when you do the, the, the delay at first, you take the software edge, so you modify one Yes. But, uh, do you think it, it still works or is it meaningful? If you shift the full edge, so if I'm if I don't have oh. one and three, I can move to two and four. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's still it's still meaningful. So for 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 us, especially in the one that we didn't really, uh, especially we we mostly studied the one where we didn't have restriction on how much we can be delaying, or, or how many edges we can be delaying, and yeah. there we can model it. But in general, I think it's it's a reasonable also possibility. Yeah. That was also actually my question. If you can just shift the same, the, the whole yeah. schedule. Yeah. Before, yeah, later. yeah. That's that's uh, but it also introduces some restrictions. So it might be quite interesting yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, Edward, again. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask everybody to, to remember, uh, maybe you can keep a few minutes, uh, a couple of minutes at the end maybe to, uh, oh. for, for questions. And actually the, the complications uh, this year that, that we have also uh, the... 
it's not purely online and it's not purely uh, offline. So we, we need to synchronize also with the other workshops for the place. Uh, 